Africa's biggest challenge is in its infrastructure and developing the infrastructure to a point where um, it's sustainable uh, and self-sufficient. The pace of um, economic growth and also immigration and population growth has just simply outpaced the capacity of the infrastructure that was most of which was installed during colonial times. There are so many bad roads and it's taking so long to get them all fixed. Sometimes I'll be waiting at a roundabout for about an hour for no good reason except there is a human being there who's decided not to let me through. With the infrastructure in place you wouldn't need people having to leave the villages, the farms, and move into the urban areas. In an effort to survive and get ahead, you have to be very creative within the, the failures of the system. The price of goods and services survives very high as people have to use generators to run their businesses and enterprises, and so they push the costs onto the price of goods and services and consumers. When there's no light, a lot of things go wrong. Even storage of food in your, in your house, it will not help you to plan. Uh, it, it makes life clumsy. Africa's greatest challenge is health, and in particular, maternal, neonatal, and child health. African governments signed the Abuja Declaration in 2011 that they would assign at least 15% of their national budgets to healthcare, we find very few countries so far have been able to attain that target. We have huge population growth and we have a lot of poverty. Uh, probably half the population is living below $2 a day. How do we find enough food to feed the emerging population that's emerging quite rapidly? And the other side of that is how do we find the right quality of food that's been demanded by the population that's becoming richer and richer? Things are starting to, to happen. The economy is bubbling, but you don't have the people that you need in order to push it forward. The type of education we get would be more and more related to job seeking rather than being job creators. A newspaper article that the company needs a driver. You can find PhD holders queuing up to become a driver because they want to live, they want to feed themselves. There will be hundreds of millions of angry, frustrated, unemployed young people. They're your vast majority. Um, who really need to be, over time, educated and exposed to what leadership is all about. Homegrown technology solutions, I think they're the best types of solutions. Nobody really understands Africa's problems as well as African people. I don't think we have enough what we call evidence-based advocacy. People just come up with ideas of, you know, what they think is right without any research supporting it. We're becoming a lot more exposed. We're global citizens. You see what's happening in other parts of the world and you start to question, why can't we do that? Why can't we achieve that? One of our greatest resources uh, on the continent is the brain trust of our young people. This continent boasts of huge numbers of educated, innovative, energetic people who possess the key to the future of our society in all spheres of development. If we develop for ourselves, we understand our challenges, we understand our needs, so we can create applications that will be relevant for us. You have to support them, you have to give them lab, you have to give them equipment, so they can develop what they have actually invented. We need more people trying new things, and you only get that when you, when you have people experimenting with research and development into new products, new services, uh, and, and, and then taking those to scale too, to making, making that into an actual business that scales into a real company. If, from a democratic standpoint, Africa remains stable, and if the economy continues to grow, then a confluence of economic growth, as well as science taking advantage of this deep penetration of mobile phones, in exponential ways, will take Africa over the hedge into the next millennium.
we have the research coming through and it's finally coming into its own. We have the ideas and the creativity to change the world, definitely. And most of all, we have the passion and the drive to see it and see our ideas come all the way through. These homegrown solutions are not just born out of a need, but they're born out of a desire to kind of elevate people from their current position to a much greater level. And I think they're always the most effective ways of solving a problem. Technology is giving me the opportunity to be brave. Technology is giving me the opportunity to say, this is what I want to do, this is how I want it done, and this is how it is going to be done. The trick now is for Africans to say, okay, we've got these resources, what should we be doing with them? And let's start exporting the finished products instead of our natural resources. If you just look at what we've done over the last 50 years, it's been tremendous compared to what even the uh, uh, developed economies have done over periods of 200, 300 years. I think the spending power, the developing middle class, the fact that we are now starting to focus on infrastructures, and the fact that natural resources seem to have come to the fore makes Africa actually very, very interesting for people to invest in. If we get the entrepreneurial spirit, we get business driving development rather than depending on development projects, rather than developing on aid. If we, our own talent is released, is there a limit? We have to own this space. We have to own the businesses. We have to own the companies of the future in Africa. And because we are the richest continent resource-wise, I see us just like going on this trajectory that doesn't have an end. I want to be part of Africa's growth story and be able to tell it, but also to live it and to be part of it. Dr. Bhattacharya, what would you say are Africa's biggest challenges and how will IBM's new research lab help? I think the, the biggest opportunity in Africa is the one natural resource which has been very much unexplored, which is data. For Africa to leapfrog all other economies in the world, we will have to build systems that can not only visualize and analyze data, anyone can do that. Well, what we are going to do is we're going to build systems that can actually think.